Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of a request. And today's first story is, I run this store, nothing moves without my say so. Alright, bet. Four years ago I worked in a store for a large well-known and well-hated telecom in Canada. I started out as a sales rep, then was quickly promoted to assistant manager because I'm a fast learner. I constantly crushed sales targets and always offered to train staff for new store openings. Joe, the regional manager, seemed to like me and was nice, which I thought was because I'm the only woman in a store with all men. But tenured sales reps warned me that he was always nice to sales reps and rude to managers. One day our store manager, SM Rick, gets fired for skipping work to watch a hockey game. He was actually seen on TV in the front row stands cheering after calling in too sick to move, and a few co-workers went out with him afterwards, where he drunkenly bragged about calling in sick to see said hockey game. Joe didn't hire a new SM because of cost, so he asked me to run the store, but without the title or pay. No problem, I love my job and the staff. I even come in on days off to make sure the staff are okay and check on supplies. I'm also the first black ASM in the region in ages, so I felt like I had something to prove. A few months go by and a customer comes in wanting to open up a small business account with six lines. I verify the company is real, credit check, HST number etc, and process the sale for four black iPhone 7s a rose gold iPhone 7 Plus and a Blackberry. Massive commission for me, even bigger commission for Joe. Joe comes to the store the next day wanting to talk about the sale. I thought I messed up along the way or it got flagged for fraud. Nope, he was peeved that I sold the store's last rose gold iPhone 7 Plus instead of holding onto it because he wanted to take it out of inventory to give it to his daughter for free, which is against company policy. And the rose gold iPhone 7 Plus was on back order. I tell him it's better for us to sell the phone and I didn't know he wanted to take it out of inventory to give it away and it's against company policy anyway. What happens next is, this grown A 6'5 man throws a tantrum. I'm talking fist balled up at the sides, shrieking you don't run anything here, this is my store. You're not the store manager, my name is on file as store manager and regional manager. Nothing happens in this store without my say so, nobody breathes unless I say so. I calmly straighten out my uniform and nod thinking you run SH and I just work here. I got it. All right, Denzel, you gonna learn today. Cue malicious compliance. He leaves and the other staff ask WTF that yelling was about. I say, well boys, I don't run SH, I just work here. If you need anything, and I literally mean anything at any time, call Joe. I stopped ordering, scheduling, etc. and did nothing for the next two days, before my previous scheduled upcoming four days off. Day one of my day off and one of the staff call me in a panic. Thick like grits, I noticed there's only one roll of toilet paper left, can you stop by and order more? I said nope, sorry, call Joe if you need anything and don't call me on my days off anymore, click. My staff support me and ring Joe's phone non-stop for those 4 days with the most mundane SH. Hey Joe, we're out of toilet paper, can you get us some? Hi Joe, um the windows are dirty, what should I do? Yo Joe, what's the schedule for next week? Thick like grits didn't make one. Yeah Joe, we're trying to process a bring your own device, COAM monthly plan. But I don't remember what the dummy IMEI is and I can't continue on the system without it. What is it? Hey Joe, we're out of SIM cards so can't process any more sales involving phones at all. Hey Joe, we're on our last few sheets of printing paper so can't print contracts. Hey Joe, I came in early to set up the new marketing but I noticed there's a light bulb out in one of the fixtures. What do I do? Joe, Andy left roast chicken bones and cake in the break area out overnight. Now the store is overrun by ants. Please send help. Joe calls and texts me non-stop but I'm off for the next 4 days so I ignore everything. Sit at home, bake some cookies, spend time with my boyfriend, now husband, hit another mall and go shopping, get my nails done, get my hair done and relish in the thought of Joe's stupid face dressed the F out at an ant infestation and his stupid eyes bulging out of his head every time my staff call asking for toilet paper. I come in for my next shift relaxed, fresh silk pressed hair and killer nails and Joe is already waiting for me in the back. Thick like grits, why is the staff calling and asking me ridiculous questions the last few days? Why are we running out of critical supplies that halt sales? Me. Well Joe, you told me that nothing moves without your say so and that I don't run anything in the store you do. So I told them if they need anything to call you, the person who runs the store. Cue the confused Pikachu look on his face. Uh, not like that. I mean like just please run the store as you see fit. There are ants everywhere and the floors are sticky. And I brought you guys some SIM cards. He scurries out of the store. I graduate from university that year and applied for a role at head office. Joe got upset and said he didn't want to lose me at the store and dangled the thought of making me store manager if I stayed. Oh well, at that point I just wanted out. I aced the interviews and got hired. 
I've been here ever since, and I never have to interact with Joe. F you and the ants, Joe. The second story is, you want me to F off? Okay, guess the lab just wasted $4,000. So I recently started posting to Reddit and I have a lot of stories. This one happened during my first career when I worked as a scientist in a diagnostic lab. I had been working for about two years at this point and had just been promoted to senior scientist. I had two supervisors in my section, each assigned to oversee half of the tests being done in our small corner of the lab, Rory and Tanya. Tanya was the senior most supervisor of the two, and secondary to my department head, she had the most authority over me on any given day. She also hated me. Never did figure out why, but she hated about three-fourths of the people working in the lab, so I never took it personally. I just don't think she liked people. The lab tends to attract people like that, funnily enough. We always used to joke about being the reject stuffed in a hole at the bottom of a hospital to be kept away from the general public. As for Rory, it's important to note that he had a very good reputation in the lab of never lying. He was never once caught in even a half-truth, and he'd been working there for over 30 years. He was well-liked and well-trusted. This'll be important later. One day I was doing one of the more technically challenging tests that our department performs. It's long, fiddly, expensive, and easy to screw up. Only senior scientists are allowed to do it unsupervised, and this was maybe the second time I've done it alone. We're talking two days just to get it set up. It was a nightmare. While I was measuring out some gelatin powder into a beaker, I accidentally elbowed Tanya. Our workstations were right on top of each other. This happened at least four to five times a day with everyone. I apologized and go back to what I was doing, but she flips out. Like full-on rage screaming in my face kind of angry. After a couple of minutes of her tirade, she says, Just F off, terrific moose. No one wants you here. And then she storms off to her office to cool off. Rory comes up to me, having seen and heard the whole thing, and asks if I'm alright. I say I'm a little shaken, but nothing too bad, and get ready to continue my work. But Rory had heard the whole thing, and he saw what test I was doing. He whispers to me, Your supervisor told you to go. Best you do what she says, and if she causes a fuss about it, I'll be sure to tell the boss exactly what she said to you. Now, I knew Rory's reputation, so I knew I'd be safe. I also know that being told to leave early by a supervisor meant that I was still paid out for the rest of the day, provided I had worked at least four hours in my shift. The lab was actually pretty generous with time off, even if the pay and working conditions were SH. So I did exactly what Tanya had said. I effed off home. Now, at the stage I was at with that particular test, I had spent about $4,000 worth of regents. Normally, batches of 20 samples are run to try and keep the cost down, but it was still an expensive test when you include the nearly three days of work from a single scientist. This was one of Tanya's tests, and therefore Rory was not required to ensure it was done. No one in my section was very happy with Tanya, and she had gone off to her office and so couldn't see me leave, so no one went to tell her that the test was left unsupervised. Apparently, she didn't come back for over an hour, and by then the test was ruined and had to be started over again. My boss was peeved. Tanya, of course, tried to throw me under the bus, saying I had left without informing anyone and that it was all my fault. But good old trustworthy Rory told the boss exactly what Tanya had said. I love Rory. I couldn't be punished for doing exactly what my supervisor had told me to do, so I got away with it completely. Unfortunately, nothing overly terrible happened to Tanya. She got formally reprimanded and had to take an anger management course that the hospital runs, but otherwise she got no real punishment. She never yelled at me again and was always careful to word things just right around me. After that though, so that was something. As for what I did on my half day off, I went to the beach to enjoy the sunshine I almost never got to see working in the deep dark dungeon that is the average hospital lab. I made sure to bring the pictures in the next day. Update. I was teaching a class with Rory today and showed him some of your replies. He's genuinely touched by it all. He does recommend not naming your children after him though, as his name was changed for the story. Also to all of you saying that four grand is too much to waste for a lab, in the grand scheme of things $4,000 is nothing. Diagnostic labs will waste that daily, just through simple errors. The boss was annoyed, but not disproportionately so. It's factored into the budget. The third story is, I sold the ring he wanted, but he told me to. I used to work in a pawn shop as both a sales associate and a pawnbroker. I have so many stories I could probably fill this subreddit, but this one always makes me smile because of how smug the man was. When I was a sales associate, I sold a lot of jewelry. I often had to tell people that we couldn't hold items because A, someone might come in and want it and have the money right there, and B, we had a layaway program. So unless you put some money down, 20%, holding it wasn't an option. So one day this man comes in and is looking for a very specific type of ring, diamond channel set anniversary ring, set in white gold size 5. The pawn shop I worked at had a vast collection of these types of things in many sizes and with many different carat weights. He needed a specific size and a specific carat weight and he was very much in luck because we happened to have it. Most pawn shops are get what you see and you can see what you get. 
Basically, we don't have inventory or stock of any specific item, and our jewelers are for sizing and dipping purposes only. So I show him my ring that I have in the case. Me, here you go. Exactly the size you need, and just over the carat weight. Man, pulls out a loop, looks at diamonds. Okay, they're not as clear as I normally like them. Me, yeah, I understand, but the price is only $350, and at a regular jewelry store, this would easily run around $1,500. So while the clarity isn't as nice, it's still a really good deal, and I don't know if you'll find another this size with the same carat weight. Man, sighing. Okay, well I know your sister's store also has some rings, right? Do you think they might have a better one with better quality? At this time, there's a woman looking at rings and clearly listening to our conversation, but I'm positive he hasn't noticed her. She sees the ring in my hand and I see her eyebrow go up. Me, I'm not sure, but they're a smaller store, so their inventory is smaller. They do have one, there isn't a guarantee the ring will be the correct size, or the same carat weight. Man, hmm, okay, well, can you hold the ring for me? I want to go see their inventory. Me, I'm sorry, we can't. Company policy is that all items held must be put on layaway for holding. If someone wants to buy an item and it isn't in layaway, we don't want to stop them. Man, hmm, well, I'm going to hold off and go check that store. If someone comes in and sees this specific ring, yeah, go ahead and sell it, but I doubt that's going to happen. He walked away with a kind of smug look on his face. Just as he left, the woman who was listening to our conversation walks up. Woman. Can I see that ring he didn't want? I hand it over to her. She slips it on her finger and smiles. Woman, I'll take it. She didn't even hesitate. She straight up bought this ring after wearing it for five seconds. During ring out, I asked her why, and she said she had been searching for a channel set ring for a few years at the pawn shops, but none had caught her eye like that one, and it was her size, which can be hard to find. I told her to have a nice day and cleaned it before she left. 45 minutes later, the man walked back in. Man, okay, they didn't have anything so I guess I'll take that one I was looking at. Me, I'm sorry sir, but just after you left a woman came up, tried on the ring and bought it. I don't have any more in that carat weight you're looking for. I have some in the higher carat weights if you're interested. Man, are you effing serious? You knew I'd probably be back. Why did you sell it? Me, well you did say I should if someone came in and saw it. Just because you doubt something is going to happen doesn't mean it can't. Thank you for watching.